Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for a mimosas and makeup. And oops, I have a mimosa right here. And it's actually Sunday. This video is going to be going up late. I just wasn't feeling up to recording yesterday. And yeah, but I, I'm feeling really good right now. And today I want to just do my March roundup and tell you about Everything I used in March is mostly eyeshadow palettes and like two lipsticks. So if that sounds good to you, oh, and I want to talk about anything I've emptied as well because I have some things in my can. So if that sounds good to you, keep watching this video. Let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you want to hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So how are you? I'm excited because my sister texted me this morning and she's like, I'm thinking about coming over for Sunday fun day. And I'm like, yes, it's always a great time for that. So I think she and I are going to film a fragrance video and um, I'm very excited to do that. Let me tell you about the makeup I'm wearing just so y'all know, because it's not too much. I do have on a little bit of the Westman Atelier foundation stick. I'm almost finished it. And I found a new one on Macari and this is the shade eight and no, nine is it eight no it's, it's eight shade eight i opened up my large lipstick from hourglass and I'm, I'm so happy to have large back i really like this hourglass satin lipstick i do have two matte ones but i haven't tried them out yet but mm, i love this one i have like four of these and there's one more shade that i want and i'm trying to decide do i want to grab that while it's on sale it's the shade alpine and it's it's a really neutral almost a foundation lips type color you're not know, like nudes and then for bronzer or blush, let me grab it. I am so in love with this from Dior. This is the Dior Forever Natural Bronze Glow. And I love it. I This is like my favorite thing right now. Oh, this is um, Peachy Bronze. And then I have on my Givenchy uh, Loose Powder Blush, which is another favorite of mine. I didn't include the Givenchy Blush. Uh, hopefully I did that another month, but... Anyway, let me know how you're doing in the comment section or the chat, whichever you prefer. And we're going to get this rodeo going. I also wanted to share that I am going to try to do a better job of taking pictures of the looks that I do with the palettes that I mentioned or, or any of the products, because I think that would just be better like to have that visual of what I did because I haven't really been doing a lot of like makeup videos lately. And in the morning, I'm just putting together like a quick five, 10 minute look. But if I take a picture of, you know, the palette that I use, the look and everything, I, th I just think that'll be better. So I'm gonna try to do that uh, in the April video. I might not have everything, but I'll have some things. Let's start with the Charlotte Tilbury Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize palette. I love this. I did a video with this uh, doing the four looks because I had this palette for a year and I hadn't touched it. This is the only Charlotte Tilbury palette I have in this uh, format, but I hope she comes out with another one because I just think that it's so easy to use, especially if you're trying to do something really quick, going out for errands or going to work. You've got looks already pre-made. She tells you where to use them. Of course, you can do whatever you want. All the looks in this palette turn out great. And anytime I just wanna do something quick that still looks put together and is a full look, this palette is, is great. So I, I'm still really happy with this. And um, even though I didn't use it when I got it, it took a whole year, I'm, I'm getting some use out of it now. So I think that's all that matters. I do have a bunch of Natasha Denona palettes this month. So just a heads up. Let's start with pastel. I used this palette to create an eye look to go with a fragrance, which was the Tweety Bird fragrance for the House of Siage. And I did like a Do We Still Love Her uh, video with uh, three of the Natasha Denona palettes. And I can't say this is a love but I'm still happy it's in my collection. I think the best looks I've done with the pastel palette is when I have paired it with something else. So I'm not mad to have this. The formula is Natasha Denona. It's just, I don't really go for pastel shades. It's not a love, it's a like, 
And I think because I have so many Natasha Denona palettes, I still haven't done it, but you can make so many really cute custom palettes, which I'd love to get into more of that. And this will go right with that. The Yucca palette is definitely a love. This one was for my Bugs Bunny uh, House of Siage fragrance, which they both went to 40% off Tweety and Bugs. So this right here, I feel like this is going to be a go-to for me for the summertime. It just reminds me of like grungy, hot summer desert vibes. Maybe I'll take this when I go to Vegas this summer. Mm, this would be nice. But I, I love this color story. And I think it, it stretches way beyond summer. I mean, you could do this for the fall. You know, it's not really winter, spring. But definitely summer, fall. I really like this palette a lot. I love the shimmers in here. I love all of the colors, every single one. So was happy to bring this one out. And it's definitely a love. It wasn't a love when I first got it because I really didn't give it too much uh, attention but yes it's a yes and the third palette from the do we still love her video was my baby the natasha denona xenon palette i love this palette so much and i'm sure y'all <laughs> are tired of hearing me talk about it when i do talk about xenon but this was the biggest surprise for me for 2023 I, I just never thought i would go for a palette like this especially because i didn't like the the mini one i didn't have any interest in that i think this one is so much more interesting than that many and i just love that there's these different shades of gray and it's funny because um i love gray gray is my favorite color as you can probably tell and i'm looking to get some repainting done and they don't make the shade of gray that um i originally had so at lowe's i got a bunch of the like paint cards and it's so crazy. They're literally 50 shades of gray or or more, at least 50 shades of gray. And it's amazing how some grays can lean blue, some can lean green, some can lean purple. And I didn't realize that until I started matching the paint cards up against the wall. So this palette's not as boring as it looks. Will the looks look similar? Yes, but I absolutely love this palette a lot. So I use that for my Wednesday House of Sea fragrance, which I don't really care for that much, but I do very much so care for Xenon. Keeping the Natasha Denona train going, I pulled out the Sunrise palette uh, for work one day and I pulled it out because I don't know, for some reason I just never get called to using this one, but I did and I think it's an absolutely beautiful palette. One of the things I can say from Natasha, one of the things I can say about Natasha Denona is that she does different color stories and I mean, she tries different things. They may not always be a hit for me, but they're usually a hit for someone. Like I know someone loves that pastel palette. I know some people cannot stand Xenon. I know a lot of people, my friend Dr. Ash said this palette broke the internet. So I think this was very uh, different for whenever this launched. I love this. I think this is gonna be a great one for the summertime as well. So let me know how you feel about Sunrise. And going with Sunrise, we have Sunset. And I most likely pulled this one out to do a basic work look with these browns because usually I go for Biba and I was like let me just pull something else out I mean it's really easy to throw together something for uh work or if you want something neutral because the only real pop shades are like this yellow maybe this red right here but everything else is pretty warm neutral bronzy and that's why I pulled that one out are we done with Tasha let me see no, we are. Oh, no, we are definitely not done with Tasha. The Zendo palette, also known by some people as the Zen No palette, because a lot of people didn't like this palette. This palette was a repurchase for me. I think maybe at the last Sephora sale or the one before that. But I did initially get it when it came out. I think a lot of people weren't happy with the shimmers. The shimmers are more uh, subdued, more uh, satin like, but they're very nice. They're not like the shimmers in the uh, Yucca palette. So I think that was the disappointment. Once again, created a everyday work look. And I do like this palette. I am happy to have it back in my collection. Let me know how you feel about Zendo because I know that one had a lot of mixed uh, reviews. So let me know your thoughts. But I think it was really because of the shimmers. Her mattes have always been consistent for me. And lastly, another palette that I don't necessarily love but it gets the job done for what I need. Uh, this is the I Need a New Palette. Took some of these out to uh, do a, a build your own palette, so I have to put them back. But again, if you just want a little wash of color, little bit of shimmer, there are a couple wet effect shimmers. They're not super wet looking, but um, this can give it to you. It's, I don't, it's not anything super special in my book, 
but like I said, it gets the job done for neutral looks or if you just want to flush. Because even if I don't do eyeshadow like right now and I just put it all just throughout the crease and on the lid and you can see there's something there. I forgot my mascara, but you know, I'm not wearing a look, but I feel awake. You know, I feel pretty put together. I probably just add a little mascara and I would just go on about my business. So I think that's it for Tswasha, my girl. Ooh, let's talk about the Isom palette. This is the number three Isom Harmony palette. I have one more look to do with that palette. I have two looks just sitting, uh, waiting to be edited. For me, this wasn't a very exciting palette to film with. Um, so that kind of just made me procrastinate on filming the video, just to be honest. I wanted to try Isom out because my friend Jamie really loves the formula, loves the palettes. I love how sleek this is and you can slide this piece out and then the shades, I don't know if you saw that, this piece slides out and then you can just push your finger through and pop the shades out, which is really cool. I don't think I'm gonna go for this as much as I was thinking that I would, to be honest. The formula is great. This brand, it, it seems to be more of a makeup artist brand. So I was really tempted by the lip palette that's in the same format, but I was like, am I carrying that lip palette with me? This is more for people who have a, a makeup kit, you know, that they're traveling with. And I love how sleek and compact the products are because if you are a makeup artist and you're traveling around with a case of makeup you'll be able to store more and have more options and so that's why there's no mirror here because you can just slide this in and then you probably have mirrors all around you if you're doing someone else's makeup for me that's not as convenient but i do like the formula of Isom, and i do like the layout of this I don't really see myself buying a bunch of Eason palettes and, and mixing and matching them all together. I think the happy medium with that would be Viseart. So I'm, I'm glad to have tried it, but I don't know like how much more I would be purchasing from the brand. I think this palette was like 80 bucks and I had 10% off or something like that, 10 or 20% off. But I'm, I'm glad to say that I've tried the brands. All right, I do have two Dior palettes. Now, these are the two palettes I took to Miami for spring break. So you've seen these before. This one is an I Am Face palette. This one's called Mitza. There's 10 shades. This is great for a blush and eyeshadow. It is pink heavy, but I do like having these browns here where you can kind of make it more brown. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. You can use this as a little subtle highlighter shade, like very uh, natural highlighter. And of course you can use these for blushes and eyeshadows. I did purchase this one from Macari, so I did not pay $130 for it. I, that's, that's a bit much, but I did get this for like 80. I've used it way more than I thought that I would. That purchase was influenced by Kinky Sweat, Alicia Archer. I don't know why I came across that video because that release isn't new. But I did, and I'm glad I purchased it because I really, really like it. The other palette that I brought with me was the Dior 10 Colors Blooming Boudoir. I got this from Selfridges, so I had a little bit of a discount on it. I love this one. I do. I did like a purple look, did like a neutral look. I love this color here. Now, this one says that it's an eyeshadow palette, whereas the other one I know is... Um, like a multi-use palette. I think that's what it says. Let me just check. Oh wait, that's the wrong box. Never mind. Let me see. Oh no, this has eyeshadow palette. Whatever. You can use it however you want. I just made that whole thing up and that's okay. The Dior eyeshadow formula is more satiny, but the mattes are really nice. They blend very well. Some people are going to feel like the shimmers are lackluster and they are. They are lackluster. They are not the shimmiest. They're more satiny. And that's okay. It just depends on what kind of look you're going for. I have seen Dior do more shimmery shimmers, but I think for the price point, you know, you can, you can find something else, but I really do enjoy this color story a lot. And, um, this is kind of the season for this palette for me, I, spring, summer, you know, this isn't giving me fall winter vibes, but I do love the deep purples in here. The deep purples I think are my favorites in this palette. I do have the Lisa Eldridge Vega palette and this was a recent addition to my uh, eyeshadow palette collection. I've really been loving the smaller palettes and I think this was great. wanted to see the hype about this one because this one was sold out for a long time. Yeah 
And with this one, we have a bunch of different formulas, uh, velvet, seamless, matte, luminous, satin. So I, I wanted to try this one out. I really like it. I wasn't interested in this one when it came out because I just wasn't into cool tones. And since then I have gotten into the cool tones and I love this one. It did not disappoint. There are other palettes like this, but I just love the curated story of this palette. And I'm looking forward to her coming out with more eyeshadow palettes. I might have also used the Sorcery palette in March too. That's the one with the green, but I don't have that in my uh, basket for some reason, but I, I like that one as well. Couple more palettes. We have the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes palette. Another one, very easy to wear to work. This would be a good palette. Like when I have to wear my blue sweatshirt, I feel like this would be a good palette. Well, never mind, no, maybe not. I love this. I can't remember which holiday this one uh, was for, but it's been a few years and I still really like this palette. I, I don't hear people really a compliment a Huda's formula. I mean, they say it's good, but I think it's really good. And I will say these shadows are holding up over time. I did take out the Science Project shade and put something else in there. But yeah, really nice formula, really consistent. And I know these are better than the nine pans. So I'm still having a good time with the Naughty News. Happy to have it. I also have here the Seahorse palette from Adept Cosmetics. And I do have one shade missing that's in a BYOP somewhere. But again, this is a great one to partner up with. So if I am doing a neutral look, I can always find something from here to match pretty much with any mattes I choose to use. So this one's great. This one, I'm trying to look at formulas. Formula's pretty smooth. Some are a little chunkier, but they're not Minka palette chunky. They're not those thickums. But these are, these are the kind of adept shimmers that I really enjoy. And I, I wasn't too much into this palette when it came out, but it does come in handy in my collection more than I thought it would upon uh, when I filmed this one. I was just kind of like, it's okay. I'm really not someone who puts the shadows over a black base. I did a whole video about that because that's how you can double the shades. But in the morning, like I said, I'm just taking something and tapping it over the eye just to give it a little sparkle. And this palette's perfect for that. I still think the 140 price tag for this was, was too much. I don't think it was worth $140. But um, I do like having it in my collection now that it's here. We have the Dark Academia palette from Shroud Cosmetics, which took, what, six months for me to get. I think this palette was great. It's neutral with some duochromes. Oh, was it worth waiting six months for? Like, oh, it's so worth the wait? No, not really. You know, this is something I could have put together by myself. The mattes aren't particularly unique, but I think the color story is unique. And I don't know if I would have come up with this color story myself. I cannot recommend this palette just because of the Shroud Cosmetics business practices. And I would not recommend it until it changes. And I'm not sure if it will. Do I enjoy the palette? Yes, I, I'm not gonna recommend the palette. All right, my last four palettes are from Lethal Cosmetics, which reminded me I did not order that new one. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, I had it in my cart because it's at Camera Ready Cosmetics. They don't have the mascara, but when I thought about it, because I really like that Periwinkle mascara, it doesn't really go with the theme of the palette. And I don't like the other two colors. So I'm probably just gonna get the palette and it's like 45 bucks. I really do want that. So I'll probably order that um, at some point today. This is the Evergreen palette, right? Evergreen. I love this palette. This reminds me of a summer forest in the day or the evening. There might be a lake there. This palette is absolutely beautiful. I really like Lethal Cosmetics. I do. I wish they would stop teasing that av Avatar thing. It's really annoying that they're doing that. And then had a whole launch while they're still teasing it. Like, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, it's supposed to be, what, 10 weeks or something that I heard? I, I'm not into that. But I am into the Evergreen palette. This is the palette that I made. And another one that I really love is really cool. I love the colors. I love this palette. I gotta name it. I didn't name this one. But I love that one. Did something with that. All these looks I did were for work. They weren't even for videos. This is the other one I made from Lethal. And uh, for this one, I think my favorites are like this black to red kind of duochrome shade, which is really nice. I don't know if you can see that change, but 
I love that one. It's really smooth. And again, I love the matte shades that I chose uh, for all of my Lethal palettes. I think someone named this one Royal Earth, which I thought was a really nice name. I can't remember about the blue one. I call this one my Bordeaux palette. I think it's too red to be like fig. Could it be a fig palette? Mm. You know they have one on their palette designer called, it's like named after a, a onion, like the purple onion. It's so cute, or garlic. I can't remember what it's named after, but I love that palette designer. It's so cute and there's so much inspo there. So if you wanna make your own palette, like if you have a lot of singles and you're not trying to buy a palette, but you're trying to put color stories together, use a palette designer. It's really, I love that. But this one, this is like a go-to for me. I could wear this one every single day and I would be content. Those are my lethal palettes and that's it for eyeshadow palettes. So let me know what you have been using. It's hard to kind of think back for March, but let me know what you've been using. I have three more products and we'll talk about the empties. Let me do this highlighter first. Now this is from Dior. It's the Glow Maximizer in the shade Rosy. And I believe this one compares to the Charlotte Tilbury, either the um, Pink Gasm or the Pink Gasm Sunset. I can't remember, but that's what it looks like. And you can blend it out or build it up, but you see it, it does sheer out. It looks good on bare skin. It looks good over makeup. I haven't been able to tell, like, does it lift the makeup where you press it in? I need to wear it a little bit more, but I like the finish. Like I said, you can just have it be really sheer and just give you a tint or you can build it up. I now own three of these. I own rosy, I own bronze, and I also own peachy. And I've been having a great time with them. I actually put peachy on my eyes, but I'm, I don't know, you can't really see this is a little sheen there, but I could have built that up a little more. But yeah, it's great for the eyes and it doesn't crease on my eyes, which is great because everything creases on me that's uh, like wet, but this dries down, it dries down really nice. And I would get those on sale. I wouldn't pay full price. This is a lipstick from Papa Beauty. This is a shade Moxie. This one was a big deal when it came out. I really like the Papa Beauty lipsticks, but you will have to reapply these. They're very shea butter heavy. That's kind of what they smell like. So you will have to reapply this very, very often. And I think that's the only downside, but I love the pigment of Moxie. I think Moxie and Finesse are my two favorites from that line. And lastly, I have my House Labs. This is like the four in one lip gloss balm oil. I don't think there's anything special about this. This is the shade Fig. I don't think there's anything special about it. I'm gonna to continue to use it, but it's a little sticky for me. Now it does say it plumps without tingle and they don't tingle, but uh, it's a little sticky. I prefer the Summer Fridays lip oil. I really love the uh, finish of that because it's just oily. It's not sticky or anything like that. It's so smooth. Yeah, smooth is what I'm going for. This has some stick to it that I'm just not always in the mood for. So I'll continue using it, but I wouldn't recommend it as anything that you have to have or that's like super special. So that's it for my roundup. We're going to go into the empties can now and I'm going to show you what I've emptied. And this can be a mix of all kinds of products. So this is my Miel Rosemary Edge Gel. Uh, rosemary is supposed to be helpful for strengthening your hair. And I don't have any issues with my edges, but I know a lot of people do. I use this to smooth down my edges and to uh, elongate my curls. There's like a little tad left in here, but I usually take it like for these, they curl up really short. So if I want them to hang down a little more, sometimes this, this helps, this helps. Yeah. And I usually put it like right here. So I like it. I like the smell of rosemary. This is rosemary mint. And I just actually washed my hair with the rosemary mint uh, shampoo and deep conditioning mask. So I'll let you know what I think about that. That's gonna be a repurchase. Uh, this is my Hum Celery Juice Fiber Gummies. And this is supposed to support natural detoxification and a daily green boost. And you have to take three of these. They're like heart shaped. I like these, I will repurchase them. But I just started some chlorophyll gummies, which also is a natural deodorizer. So I might see how I feel after that and then repurchase this one. This one has vitamin A, vitamin C. It's got folate and then the celery. Oh, this one has chlorophyll too. 
So yeah, vitamin B6. Yeah, I like, I like these. But I'm gonna try the other chlorophyll ones. This is my YSL Glow In Balm. This is a primer, a glowy primer. I've gone through two of these. I'm not going to repurchase this one because right now I'm using my Kiehl's sunscreen as a primer. And then I also have that Dior Glow Filter. I have my Cali Ray Primer. So I don't think this one was anything special. It's just a little glowy. So it'll give you some natural radiance and it's a moisturizer. So it's just one step prime and moisturize, which I liked it for that. But, um, you know, I don't feel the need to repurchase that right now. I have a hydrating eye cream with hyaluronic acid from First Aid Beauty. I don't think this was anything special either. Right now I'm using an eye cream from Kiehl's and I also have my Fenty Flash Snap, but I like trying different eye creams. I do have one from Alpen Beauty that I just uh, purchased during the sale. I have my Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. I just bought a new one of those and I'm so happy to have that. I was using the Ami Cole one and that didn't do anything for my brows. But this one, see, I like that this one makes my brows like, they're not hard, but you they're in place. And it also, because you get a little bit of the gel or I get a little bit of the gel on my skin, it makes the pencil um, stick better. I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining it right but I can feel it on my skin. And when I try to make those like hair strokes, to me, they come out better. I don't know why, but they do. Oh, I have two lip products. This one is from Juvia's Place. I broke this lipstick, I think. Yeah, this one's broken really bad. Um, I could probably salvage this, but it's the same thing like with my Velvet Affair, which I don't know where that is, but that should be here too. Uh, because that one broke really bad and then when I'm trying to fix it it's just a mess when I'm trying to still use it and I'm holding on to the bullet it's a mess I also have the pillow talk Charlotte Tilbury hyaluronic lipstick lip balm which I love these I should have got another one of these during the sale those are really nice they're a little sticky I'm trying to think what they remind me of maybe the candy glaze from YSL or the Tarte Maracujula like not the plumpy bomb, but the other one, like it's a little sticky, but I really like it. This is Dulce by Rosie Jane. This is a like vanilla smell. And I finished that travel size. I would purchase it in a full size, but I just don't need to because I have a lot of vanilla scents. Ami Cole brow gel. This isn't finished, but it's going, it's, it's no point in me using that. It doesn't do anything for me. I have a dried out uh this kind of dried out lipstick this or lip liner this is saint lux probably came in a boxy charm or something way back when so i'm getting rid of that and i do have a brow pencil this is from who l'oreal l'oreal brow definer yeah i always use the micro thin pencils and i get the drugstore kind my favorite is the maybelline express brow in black brown but if they don't have that, I can get them from any brand. But I don't like that slanted, thick type of brow product. I like the thin micro pencil. And that is going to be it. So let me know if you've emptied any products and let me know like what you are using right now. I know some people shop the Sephora sale, so they're trying a bunch of new stuff. I know some people didn't. So let me know what you've been using and what you're loving, what you're finishing up. I really do feel good about finishing up some products and um yeah, that's why I like to talk about those. So that is going to be it for this mimosas and makeup. I love doing the roundup because it lets me know what I'm gravitating towards. And right now when I look at the palettes, Natasha Denona palettes are not going to waste in this collection and neither are my lethal palettes. Like they are really being used. I think about like some of the other palettes that surprised me, like the Dior ones. I, at one point I was about to sell all my Dior stuff cause I was just so into the really shifty shades. And now I'm kind of going back the other way. So yeah, Natasha Denona is kind of the happy medium because she's got some really, and Lethal, you know, they've got their, their consistent mattes. You know, Lethal does great shimmers. Natasha Denona, she has more of a variety when it comes to her shimmer formula, but like both brands have been a win for me. The Lisa Eldridge palette is great. The Charlotte Tilbury palette, that one is a surprise for me. Like that that's going strong like that, even though it's like a discontinued palette. Yeah, Adept is always nearby and even taking out the Huda Beauty palette. I wanna take out the Rose Quartz one to see you know, how I feel about that one. I think I've only used that one time and I still haven't used Empowered. So 
yeah, it, it's reflective, you know, to keep track of the makeup you use. And I'm, I'm happy to do that. So thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another Mimosas and Makeup today. I hope this was therapy for you. You know, it always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you're being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice. Stay safe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Go on, blah, blah.